Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best has been at the center of the week's long push to dismantle CHOP. She led yesterday's effort to take back the department's East Precinct in the so-called Capitol Hill organized protest zone after protesters were forced to vacate the area. Chief Best, gracious enough to join us this morning, now live here on King 5 Mornings uh, on what is expected moving forward. Chief, thanks for being with us this morning. We appreciate it. Good morning, Jake. Thank, thanks for having me. Yeah. So you were successful yesterday, it appears, in moving back into the precinct. First, what's it look like in there? Is it what you expected? And when can we expect to see Seattle police uh, staying there and reestablishing, so to speak? Well, we do have some uh, personnel already uh, in the precinct and have made it partially operational. Uh, clearly, uh, getting into the precinct was very important to me and to the officers who have been assigned there. Um, and the precinct is like their second home. They spend a lot of time uh, there. That's where they gather. That's where they get information. That's how they uh, have their roll calls and go out for the day. But for me personally, it was just really important that we were able to have that facility to respond to so that we could uh, serve everybody who lives within that East Precinct area equitably and fairly. Uh, and not being there uh, made that really hard to do. Yeah, I know it must have looked a lot different uh, given that that's where you yep. started with Seattle Police so many years ago. Yep. I I'm curious too, your, your plan moving forward, Chief, last night we saw yet again a clash with protesters. And I'm just wondering, what are your thoughts here moving forward about standing guard outside the precinct? Are we going to start this cycle all over again? You know, Jake, that is something I really hope that does not happen. Obviously, we're going to be responding to what we're presented with. Uh, we've get, been given through the mayoral uh, proclamation the ability to keep people out of the area for uh, up to 10 days. So we're hoping that during that time frame, we'll be able to create dialogue, be able to move on, to look forward, to re-envision, as I've talked about before, how we're going to do policing, how we're going to engage all the voices, particularly the young voices of people who are engaged uh, in these demonstrations in and around the precinct. It's really important that we have that dialogue so that we can move this forward. So and let's talk about that for just a quick second. What are your thoughts on that, Chief, about about what reimagining the police department looks like. Do you have any ideas? Is there any discussion at the table with any of the leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement to make some real change? What are some of the plans? Yeah, well, certainly there's been a lot of uh, ideas offered up, and so we're considering each of those, and many of our uh, city uh, electives are involved in that discussion. But there's a talk about defunding, and that means different things to different people, but investing in services that are much needed. Um, I don't think anybody knows better than the cops who are out there every single day that we have a real gap in our mental health system. We need to, prov to be providing extra and additional uh, resources for people who are in mental crisis. Uh, we responded to 16,000 mental crisis calls alone. So there are opportunities here to invest in um, people who are unsheltered, people who are in mental crisis, uh, and maybe we can do some work in that area. Uh, we think it's really important that this is uh, community-led so they can tell us what services um, they expect and, how, and who should be providing the services to the community. And I think that's a real critical piece of the re-envisioning. Yeah. Chief, what's the relationship like right now between you and the mayor? I know early on it was pretty public that you did not want to leave that East Precinct, but orders came from the mayor's office to do so. And now we saw what we saw yesterday. Yeah. I'm just curious, what's it like right now between you and Mayor Durkin? Yeah, a couple of things, Jake. Uh, I want to correct the record for what happened with the officers not being in the precinct because I think over time, as we were able to peel back the layers and find out um, what happened, essentially um, we were asked to open up the uh, borders, so to speak, that were at the precinct, the barricades. When we did that, we had thousands of uh, demonstrators come into the area. Uh, we determined, the people who were in the precinct determined that they wanted to make sure that all sensitive material, uh, booking sheets, records, uh, transcripts, all that was removed from the precinct. Additionally, um, our Seattle Fire Chief had warned us uh, you know, about um, a potential for a fire hazard with the precinct. So we took a lot of that uh, equipment and uh, stuff out of the precinct with the, every intention of uh, returning to the precinct, but we simply weren't able to do so because of the sheer number of people. And then the barricades went up from the protesters. So um, it was a, 
a series of events that led to us not being able to get back into our own facility. And, my, and in terms of my relationship with the mayor, uh, you know, we uh, both agree that nothing is more important than our public safety. Uh, how we get there, um, we have those discussions routinely. And so I think we're all in alignment that we need to make sure that we're taking care of the public safety in the area. All right, Police Chief Carmen Best uh, with an update this morning. Um, doesn't look like uh, protesters are backing down anytime soon. We'll keep staying on it. We appreciate you giving us updates. Thanks, Chief. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. I'll be back.